Hi, my name is Rene Martinez. I have been known as Guitar Tech Extraordinaire, Tech to the Stars, Half Tools Will Travel. On the Stratocaster, I'm going to do a uh, actual setup as if I uh, were setting up Stevie's guitar. So this is going to be a Stevie Ray Vaughan setup. Uh, people have been asking me about this setup and how it's done and how I did it and it all came about uh, when Stevie first brought his guitar to me was asking me to uh, um, raise the strings on it uh, the neck wasn't playing right uh, things like that so it involves a setup a setup is nothing more than making sure that uh, the guitar uh, feels right plays right it's in tune and uh, it involves a couple of little uh, technical things, which means um, the neck has to be straight, the, the nut height has to be correct, and the, uh, the height of the uh, saddles have to be correct as well. So for you people out there who are not totally familiar with the guitar, we're going to run through it because it's important. So obviously this is the uh, a Stratocaster. Uh, this particular guitar here was one of the ones that uh, I helped Stevie uh, design. Uh, when I first started working with Stevie, we uh, um, had a guitar that would had name on here, but this is inscribed in the pick guard. And, and he had uh, the nickel. SRV model, uh, and Stevie said yes to that, so here we go. Now, what I did in order to set up a guitar is uh, take off all, all the strings and uh, make sure that the neck is straight. And the only way to look at the neck if it's straight is to actually sight down the guitar neck. And I sight it down from this angle looking at the guitar body. So from here to here. And what I'm looking for is uh, straightness of the neck. And I look at two points of the neck. This plane here is if this were a flat plane, and this plane here is if this was a flat plane. Both planes meet each other in a 90, 90 degree angle, and then I would sight down the corner of that 90 degree angle. So from this point here to here. I never look down from this edge to the saddles or to the bridge or any other part of the guitar, I just use the neck itself. A lot of people use the rest of the body as uh, some kind of aim, but it's not right. And the reason why it's not right is because you get an illusion going on with the dimensions of the body. So you'll get a bad reference if this neck, neck is straight or not. So that's what I do. I don't look at it from this side going to the nut because then again I have the mass of the body giving me false readings to my eyes so there's very little mass on this side and that's how I'm able to sight down the neck. Now remember that when you pick up the neck itself in the guitar you have weight of the body and this in turn will could bow the neck a tiny bit ever so slightly but it still can so even if I left it here on the bench or so it still gives it a bow. So how do you know if you have a truly straight neck and the best way to do it is to take the weight of the body off the neck. And the way I do that is I have to take the guitar up and then I have to grab it and I have to actually put it down on my foot to look at so I can sight down the neck. So I put the body or the end of the guitar down and I sight down the neck itself. So the next thing I did was actually go in and start restringing the guitar. I'll just show you exactly how I did it. There's no right way to do it. There's only your way to do it. And uh, my way just seems to work for me. And uh, I can get this thing moving in and squared up as quickly as possible. And you just take your time and putting in strings. I always hope that these strings are all in the same order when I uh, take them out of the packet. I don't really read them. I just assume that they're all from the biggest to the smallest. And I start with the biggest and I work my way through and get everything in here. Now Stevie used some pretty big strings at the time. Uh, he was using uh, 13s as the first string, 13 plain. At one time, he did use an actual 14 as the first string, but uh, it didn't leave much room for the rest of the strings as far as uh, sizes, because that's, that's a pretty big string to put on as a first string. And not only that, the heights on it were, were uh, the biggest I've ever seen in my, life, my whole career. 
but uh, he seemed to enjoy them and he got a lot of tone from them too. And why he went there with such big strings, I really don't know. I have some stories about it, but that's another whole chapter all on its own. Okay, so I got all the strings on. Next thing to do is to tie them on and uh, go on and get a string winder. I like this string winder here. This is something that I'm actually um, have got uh, uh, for sale. This is Rene Martinez string winder. Uh, what's different about this one here? Well, not too much, but I kind of like it because I'm able to, it comes in two pieces and, and this fits inside here. This becomes the actual winding part where it goes to the string winder itself, I mean the, uh, the string uh, machine, and then it just, it's just a normal thing. Also, if you wanted to use your little small cordless drill, whatever, it's got a, uh, an end for it, it'll fit in there and you can do it electrically. So. I'd do it this way. Okay, from here, the next thing that we do here is we make sure that we touch down here with your thumb, touch the end of the string right after the saddle, and you press down. And the same thing for the second string, and then for the third, and the fourth, fifth, and sixth. And you do the same thing down here. Press down here right before the nut. You go, okay, so why am I doing that? The reason why I'm doing that is when the string comes out of the, uh, of the hole here, it goes over the saddle and it arcs. So it actually, the string comes out and it arcs and it's sitting over the saddle right here, arcing like this. And it actually should be straight, coming 90 degrees from the saddle itself, that's this point, all the way to the point of where it is here at the nut. And the nut, you have to do the same thing because it rides over and still arcs. So you have to push down just to make sure that you don't have any buzzes because once you start doing chimes or harmonics up here at the 12th fret, you'll hear that waver. The waver will just uh, be eminent there. It won't go away. And the only way to get rid of it is to actually do what I just did. So if you can remember to do that every string change, then your guitar will be pretty much in tune because I have done that where I have forgotten it and I would actually strobe it out and I would strobe it to where uh, I thought it was perfect according to what the strobe said and it's because I didn't press down here that I was getting some bad tones and Stevie would say it's still not in tune and I would just ask myself well it's got to be in tune I know it's in tune I just strobed it but I didn't do that one little trick of pushing it down here and it always did the job all the time. Okay so I'm going to show you how to set up the guitar. What we do is we tune this uh, with Stevie I had it tuned to E flat uh, that's what was different about everything. So this guitar is tuned up to E flat right now. And uh, these are the specs that I used. Um, this is what I came up with on my own. This is something that I, I just figured out and it seemed to work for me. I didn't have any particular book or person tell me how to set up everything because nobody really could give me some specs. So I thought I'd come up with my own. And, and this is a, uh, was a trial um, set of specs that I used and they seemed to work. But you can also adjust these things uh, where they can be even lower or go up even higher. But uh, with these specs here, they were able to work for me at these heights, at these numbers. If you do it anything different, and it's going to give you a different result, so I can't guarantee that. But mind you, everything else has to work. Your neck's got to be straight, the, the nut has to be at the right height, and the nut measurements are right here. And you measure uh, using the top of the fret and the, uh, the bottom of the string and then you use a ruler. And the ruler that I like to use is a six inch ruler. And this one here is the, the uh, Rene Martinez by Mojo Tone uh, six inch ruler. It has 30 seconds and 60 force on it. Uh, works well. Uh, I would highly recommend making sure that you use something to gauge by instead of just using your feel. Uh, I use the feel if I have to on a moment's notice. I use all my experience and I can, I can set up the height uh, quickly, you know, just before a TV shot or something. And, uh, but when it comes down to the real deal, this is, this is the way to go. So this particular set of uh, specs here are for electric guitar, electric bass, acoustic guitar, uh, classical guitar, and flamenco guitar. And these were uh, round wound nickel rockers. Uh, they're still available. I think you can find them at the GHS site. Uh, they may be under a different name, but uh, they were a semi-flat round wound string. Uh, they're not flats, they're not bass strings, they're just called semi-flat because that's what was written on the package. 
and uh, you still be able to get them through them if you'd like to go there. Otherwise, you can just still use the same gauges, you know, 11, 15, 19, plain, 28, 38, 58 in any kind of round wound, whether it be super steels or, or nickel plated or, or whatever, what you had me. So it's, uh, it really doesn't make any difference. The actual setup makes all the difference in the world. Uh, with Stevie's, I had to use five springs. This one has three. So when, when I used uh, his guitar, I had to put five. And the reason why I had five on here is because the, those string gauges that I told you about pull so much, even at uh, E flat, that it would pull the bridge up and you can actually see this tailpiece go up in the air a little bit. So we couldn't have that. This has to sit flush on the body. The most important of all the setups for Stevie, this is the important aspect of it because the tone translating from the bridge to the body was all part of it too. You could not get away from that. So here we're going to go. We're going to set this up. I'm going to uh, use my tools here. This is my tool set. My other Mojo Tone, Renee Martinez by Mojo Tone tool set here that, uh, that I'm using. And inside here, I have a little handle and I have my .050 bit that I'm going to use to raise at the saddles. So here we go. And uh, get a pencil and paper ready to write down these specs if you like. This is going to be at three and a half thirty seconds on the treble side. And it's going to probably take a little bit to get it all up here, but I want to show you each one so that you can see. I already showed you the height as to what it looks like. Right at three. Three and a half is what we want. You can use 64s if you like. I've been so used to doing this at three and a half that I have no problem knowing exactly where it is. Even though I haven't set one of these up in a long time, it's just like I did it yesterday. So, you now this is for the treble side again, three and a half, 30 seconds at the 12th fret, top of the fret, bottom of the string. Almost there. Take your time. Make sure it's correct because that's what it's all about. Okay, done deal. Now we're going to go to the base side and we're going to go to four 30 seconds. A half more than the treble side. He liked them high because he was able to get his fingers underneath the string when he bent the string. It just felt good to him. It was not a macho thing. And uh, he could get the tone out of them. He could still hit the string and they would buzz because he hit them so hard. He had such strength in his hands. Okay, almost there. Now we got the sixth string left to do. And once we're done with that, we have very close to a Stevie Ray Vaughan setup here. And there we go, four, 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 three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, 30 seconds. Now, if you look at the bridge itself, even just raising the bridge saddles up, you can see that the, the bottom of the string itself, I mean, the, uh, the bridge itself is not touching the body. It's raised up because there's more tension on here. And that's what usually happens. So you gotta make sure that this tailpiece sits up flush against the body and the only way to do that is to actually tighten up the spring. As uh, I was saying before, the bridge itself has to lay flat on the body for the most tone possible. This has to sit flush. If it moves, as you can see here, it's moving a little bit, then you have to tighten up the springs in the back. And if it doesn't do it, like with Stevie's setups, you have to use five springs. There's no way around it. And that's what I would do. So if I had two more springs, I would put it on here and then um, make sure that this doesn't move at all. But yet enough to employ, as he liked, a tremolo arm so he can actually use the tremolo to uh, employ the, uh, the vibrato. So uh, you can tighten it up and then you can feel it, make sure it's comfortable that you can actually employ the tremolo and do it. And then of course, it's a matter of tuning it back up. And there it is, out of tune.
and still the height is the same high as can be. And uh, very comfortable to play for him, but not so for me.